We're here with uh, the founder of the National Black Club University, Chicago Black Club Union, Cyron Smith. Cyron, I ask you to join us in an interview and explain to us exactly what it is you do, how'd you do it, how'd you get started. Uh, we're kind of lost here. Help okay. Us. Well, uh, first, my name is Cyron Smith, as uh, Laurie indicated. I'm the founder of the National Block Club University, based here in Chicago. The mission is to combat crime and disorder. Um, America is one of the most violent places on earth. Uh, we lose about 16,000 people to homicides every single year. Well, unfortunately, the people that's dying, um, a great percentage of them look like me. Uh, urban America, there's a silent war going on on the streets of uh, black America that is not uh, given a lot of priority from the powers that be the government. So in Chicago, for instance, we had almost 440 people murdered last year just in this city. In Miami, Detroit, Philadelphia, it's the same thing. So the National Block Club University is set up so that we can organize in each of these neighborhoods that are experiencing these uh, rash of, of uh, violent acts against um, primarily black people. Is there a connection though between uh, Cleveland and Chicago? Is I mean, you're organizing in all these cities, but how can we connect the dots? Well, believe it or not, it's all connected. Uh, there's no one thing that is causing this homicide. It's a slew of things, but what is consistent is the fact that we're not connected. So what we've done here in Chicago, and Chicago is pretty unique in America. Uh, New York is on the East Coast, LA is on the West Coast. We're centrally located here in the Midwest and uh, we, we're the hub for a lot of things, transportation. So it's only right that we use Chicago as the linkage to link around black America. So it's 20 Chicago neighborhoods. Each one by zip code is linked to a different city. Uh, we're in 60644 over here on the West Side. It's linked to St. Louis, Missouri. So that's the linkage and all 20 uh, black cities are linked to these 20 Chicago neighborhoods. And do we get a chance to, uh, you know, uh, meet with people from St. Louis or is it something where we can exchange stories or how does that work? Well, the, 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 the purpose of the linkage is because they're going through the same thing, uh, we get to travel. And I believe traveling is something that's really um, it's not given the right respect that it should be given. For me, uh, being out here doing things I shouldn't have done before I joined the Navy, it was the U.S. Navy that allowed me to travel around the world and it just brought my whole perspective and, and it helped me to become a stronger person. So being linked to St. Louis, the young people in St. Louis who never been downtown St. Louis now get to travel to Chicago and they'll be right here in this zip code based out of the zip code and vice versa. Your kids from this zip code traveling out of town to St. Louis. So that's the linkage. Uh, and, and that's the key to combating crime? It is tremendous. I'll give you a slew of examples. We had uh, a guy in Roseland, 60628, uh, known in Roseland as a so-called troublemaker. I don't call him that, but people in the community called him that. Wouldn't dare show you his soft side in Roseland. He was in Memphis, Tennessee, midnight, was supposed to be in his room. I'm doing my walk through the hotel. He's in the pool with his Liberty shorts on, looking up at the moon all by himself. And I challenged him, why are you in the pool? And he just begged me to let him be at peace because in Chicago, he can't relax like this. Tough guy, wreaking havoc in Chicago, in Memphis, loving life, and open and ready to learn and receive. Does that, does that somehow connect to the lack of education or the failure for our schools to properly educate our young people? Tremendous. You know, you, if, if I'm being gangster gangster, you can't teach me nothing. You know, Kanye said you can't tell me nothing. So you got to get them out of that environment so that they can open up to receive. You know, a closed fist can't get anything in it. Open up, now I can teach you. Now I can put something um, in, your, in your mind. Okay. So, so you have this village concept where, you know, we've heard that it takes more than a village to raise a family or a right, kid. Right, right. I mean, how do you apply that in right. urban Chicago or Atlanta or New York City? How often do you get to these cities to uh, work with your supporters or people in your organization? That, that's a loaded question. The, the first one, to us, that cliche is uh, strategic. A village to us is a 12 to 20 block area. 
So literally, we've already zoned out across America 12 to 20 block areas, and each 12 to 20 block area is given a number. And that number is how we identify everything that happens within that 12 block area, 12 to 20 block area. So for instance, in, in the village in Woodlawn, there's 1,100 people there. We know there's 192 retired senior citizens in that area. We know it's 212 unemployed people, 28 of vacant buildings. Um, 20 of those owned by outsiders. We know it's nine registered sex offenders. So when we say village, we're not just using cliche. There is strategic organizing steps that's taken within that small boundary area so we'll know what we're working with. How can you help somebody if you don't have the details of what they're going through? And so every village that we have, we do the research to find out what the heck is going on block by block within that area. And then that's how we start to apply the, the resources to help them in, the, in changing it. Okay, you did not mention how do you travel to these cities. How do you stay in contact with these cities? That's you do it through a live wire, a phone call, or, or video conferencing, or you travel. I, I mentioned to you the so-called gangbanger in Roseland who went to Memphis. Every month we go to a different city. We rent vans, we rent cars, and we load up the teenagers, and we go to the villages all across the country and uh, do the same thing, organize, reach out, touch people give away money when we touch down in those cities to help win over the confidence of the people there. So uh, every month we, we only go doing it. And who funds you guys? How do you make your money? How do, how do you get to these grants? You must have a big budget. Uh, we don't do grants. Unfortunately, uh, that's one of the reasons why we are building the village is because a lot of um, people in, the, in these urban settings are getting pimped. And what I mean by getting pimped you got people who are conscious who know that grants are out there and they organize a small not-for-profit and they're out there getting grants to help the village. The sad thing about the people in the village don't even know. So you got a, a block of 60 senior citizens and you got a church up the street that just got a million dollar grant for seniors. The 60 seniors on that block don't even know the church got the resources for them. So what part of the village concept is to make sure that anything that happens for the people within them boundaries all external forces need to communicate to him. So that church will have to talk to the village before he go and get that million dollar grant for the senior so we can make sure that they benefit from it. 